join us and discover beautiful beaches, rugged landscapes, pretty towns, desolate mountain ranges that sweep down to stunning lakes, unique architecture, history and folklore, no shamrocks, no shillelaghs and definitely no shenanigans, just naked Ireland. This is Christ Church Cathedral in the heart of Dublin. It's located at the end of Edward Street and next to Wood Quay, which was the medieval heart of Dublin. Aside from the cathedral, there's not much trace of that old Dublin here today, as a result of much development in the 20th century. The construction of the carriageway behind us now, that's the continuation of Dame Street, severed the cathedral from its medieval streets and surroundings. And other redevelopment in the area, including, ironically, the building of the council offices between the cathedral and the quays, has thoroughly modernised the area, largely erasing its medieval past. This sculpture is called Homeless Jesus by the Canadian artist Tim Schmaltz. It is presumably designed to stir the conscience of people in a city where homelessness is a real problem. We're now looking at the ruins of the old chapter house. There's a new one now attached to the main body of the cathedral, but as you can perhaps see, this space is now being used for beekeeping. Aside from the redevelopment I mentioned that has affected the cathedral, this place has a rich history. It was founded in and around 1028 under the Viking king Citric Silkenbeard. What a name, you couldn't make it up. This early church would have been a wooden construction, as we know it was rebuilt in stone at the end of the 12th century by Richard de Clare, commonly known by his nickname Strongbow. staircase on the left leads up to the bridge across Wine Tavern Street, which you'll have seen in the opening of the video. Once inside the cathedral, we can visit this tomb of the aforementioned Strongbow. In fact, this effigy may be of another night altogether, since after the collapse of the cathedral's south wall and arched stone roof in 1562, it's thought that the original tomb may have been destroyed. Look carefully here at the bottom of this arch and you'll see an original carved head of a monkey dating from the 13th century. The stained glass in the cathedral, while based on medieval designs, dates from the 1870s. The glass in the baptistry that we're now entering depicts some of the Irish saints. And just look at this beautiful baptismal font. This item contains a piece of every type of marble found in Ireland. Now a closer look at the windows in here. I think this one is St. Patrick, our patron saint. This is a beautifully serene part of the cathedral. If you look very carefully from this vantage point, you should see that the wall on the right leans outwards by 18 inches due to the collapse in 1562. Much rebuilding had to be done after this catastrophe, and much of the original medieval building material was levelled and buried under the new floor. but the splendour of the exterior walls still remain. In the 19th century, the Victorians carried out some of the most extensive rebuilding work. To the extent that it can be difficult now to know what fabric is genuinely medieval and what is Victorian pastiche, this is certainly all part of the Victorian Gothic upgrade. We think that buried under this impressive floor lies the medieval rubble of that earlier collapse. It would seem a shame to excavate such a beautiful floor, but you can't help wonder what's under here. We now 
now begin our visit to the 12th century crypt. Before we do, maybe take a second to like the video and hit the subscribe button. This is the largest cathedral crypt in Britain and Ireland and was constructed between 1172 and 1173. Since it's opened into the public in the early 2000s after renovations, it really does have the feel of a tourist attraction with its ambient lighting and presentation. You can decide for yourself if this is to your taste. Let me know in the comments what you think. This wooden carving is thought to be the oldest secular carving that exists in Ireland. It originally was hung outside Dublin's medieval city hall, alas demolished in 1806. Still at least we have the carving, if not the building. There's also a display of costumes and a wooden changing room where it seems to encourage people to slip into some period clothes. I didn't see anyone take advantage of this offer while I was there, but perhaps it's something that might interest you. This is interesting though. These are the actual stocks that once stood in the yard outside the cathedral, dating from around 1670. The dean and chapter of the cathedral could order anyone from the area of Christchurch into the stocks. You can see a gift shop in front of us now, such is the nature of the church in the modern world. And these two unfortunate creatures were found in the organ pipes around 1870. There are many old manuscripts on display here too, including a copy of the Magna Carta. This tabernacle and these candlesticks were last used in the service for Catholic King James II in 1690 when the cathedral was restored as a Roman Catholic cathedral. And not far from those artefacts is this royal plate given by King James's nemesis, King William of Orange, in 1697 as a thanks for his victory over James at the Battle of the Boyne. These are landmark relics in Irish history. And there's so much more to explore that I haven't even touched on here. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Please give the video a like if you've watched this far. And subscribing to the channel really helps. I'll see you very soon in the next video.